In order to explore our use of Jinja templates a little bit deeper and to learn some new concepts, in particular control structures, for loops, and conditionals within Jinja, we're going to look at a new mini application that will track to-dos. And basically, it'll just allow us to type in given tasks, submit the form, and to see those tasks displayed in a list on the same page. Okay, so let's go look at the code I've already put in place for this. If you're following along, go ahead and uh, pause at the corresponding um, portions to, to type in this code yourself. It's not that much, so it won't take you very long. I've added a new request handler here called todos, and it's going to accept requests at slash todos. And so far, all of it does is it fetches the template named todos.html, and then it renders that template. Let's look at what that template contains. The template at this point contains a simple document, um, and it has a form with one text input and a submit button. So that's what we saw over here. So far, my, my simple template only contains this content. There's no ability to handle a request or render the lists or render the tasks that are in the list at this point, but we're going to add those in just a moment. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add uh, some templating syntax so that when I don't have any tasks in my template, um, when I don't have any tasks in my task list, I have a nice message displayed that, that indicates so. So to do that, let's go ahead and go back and look at how we're going to track our tasks within the Python file. Above this request handler, I'm going to make a global list variable called todos. And uh, you know, at some point in the, in, in the near future, we'll learn about databases and storing our data in uh, persistent databases. For now, though, when we need to do this kind of thing, we'll typically make a global list variable that can be accessed by any of our request handlers throughout our file. So here, I'm just going to make this um, to-dos list. It's going to start out empty. And then within my handler here, when I run to the template, I just want to pass in that list. So at some point soon, we'll add code to add items to this list. And so this list may or may not be empty when this particular handler is called. The first time it's called, though, it certainly will be empty. So let's come back to our template. And what I want to do now is basically be able to check the size of this list within the template and to display a message if it doesn't have any items in it. So to do this, we need to introduce conditionals within Jinja. So I can make a simple if statement by using the curly brace percent syntax. Okay. So between these, uh, I'll be able to put things like conditionals and for loops. So for this one, I would just want to check using an if statement whether or not the tasks um, list has anything in it. And so this is slightly different syntax from Python. You'll find that some of the things in Jinja are very intuitive and very Python-like. This is one of those that isn't. Normally we would use the len function, the len function to determine the length of a list. Here we don't have it. So if uh, if I use tasks, and this is a vertical bar or pipe, it's going to be uh, usually on the key above your backslash. It's the shift backslash will get you the vertical bar of the pipe. And I say tasks, pipe, length, and I check to see whether or not that's zero. And so if that is zero, I just want to put a simple message here and say no tasks yet. And the way I conclude a conditional is to say end if. So this is, this is necessary for this conditional to end. All right, since I don't have white space um, based formatting here, indentation based formatting, Jinja needs to explicitly know when the conditional ends rather than, uh, as in Python, we would know that a conditional ended when the next line of text wasn't indented. Obviously, these templates are not as sensitive to white space, so we have to explicitly tell Jinja when the conditional block ends. Okay, so let's go back and refresh our page. Let's see, I have task is not defined, so just piling up the errors today. Let's go back and uh, see what we've got. So tasks equals tasks. Actually, that's right. This should be tasks equals these names should match. So let me change that global variable name to, to match that. OK, there we go. So now that uh, that was passed in properly and there was an empty list, the template registered that that was an empty list and displayed this message within the conditional block. Okay, so that's how you how to use a simple conditional. We'll look at how to add an else clause to our conditionals in uh, in just a moment.